Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our morning inspiration. Wednesday, July 3rd, 2024. Our reading today comes to us from Isaiah chapter 30, reading from verse 1 to 7. And it says, Woe to the rebellious children, say the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with a covering, but not of my spirit, that they may add sin to sin, that walk to go down into Egypt, and have not asked at my mouth, to strengthen themselves in the strength of Pharaoh, and to trust in the shadow of Egypt. Therefore shall the strength of Pharaoh be your shame, and the trust in the shadow of Egypt your confusion. For his princes were at Zoan, and his ambassadors came to Annas. They were all ashamed of a people that could not profit them, nor be an help nor profit, but a shame and also a reproach. The burden of the beast of the south into the land of trouble and anguish, from whence come to the young and old lion, the viper and fiery flying serpent, they will carry their riches upon the shoulders of young asses, and their treasures upon the branches upon the bunches of camels, to a people that shall not profit them. For the Egyptians shall help in vain and to no purpose. Therefore have I cried concerning this their strength is to sit still amen we give god thanks this morning for his holy words this reading this morning is a very perplexing one and a very serious message and i hope that you know we will really allow the spirit of god to guide us to guide us and to direct our thoughts and our understanding now as we learn from the reading this morning that it is often time the folly or the foolishness of the jews to turn to their neighbors or to turn to the nations around them whenever they are in trouble or when they are up against another nation in battle and so they will sought help from another nation and we can read more and that in 2 Chronicles 16 verse 2 and 16 verse 3. And also we can look at 2 Kings chapter 16, 7 and 2 Kings 18, 21. So we can see here how their sin is described and why it is such a problem for God and why it is provoking to God. We see here that whenever they were in distress, they would not consult God. So they, instead of consulting God, they would do things to how they see and what seems the best course of action to them. So they will not seek God's advice. And though they have the prophets and they have the means and the how of how to go about this consultation by seeking God, they will not use them because the prophets were there. And remember, before Israel go into battle, oftentimes they would consult God and they would consult God through the prophets and so on. But we realize here that they don't want to take that approach, but instead they went after their own course. So they have more confidence in themselves to uh, produce their own measure that they saw it pointless to consult God for anything. So they will not consult the oracle, as you would say. An oracle simply means somebody who predict prophecy or a prophet. That's another word you can use for it. And they went and they would seek the assistance of their neighbors. And we saw in the reading here where that oftentimes turns out very bad for them. Because they will sought the help of their neighbors and their neighbors would not come to their aid. So it leads to further problem for them. So they counsel amongst themselves one to another and they do not ask counsel of God as I said. So they cover with covering. So they find themselves in a problem and they are covering it up with another problem. So they think to source themselves with the shelter of other so they seek to align themselves 
with the other nations, right? And then they believe that by doing so, they will gain the upper hand. But we realize that that covering is not and was not enough. They needed the covering of the Spirit of God. They needed God because can the other nation protect you when you go into battle without the protection of God? Can you safely say that you will be protected from your enemies? No. And so that is why every time Israel went into battle, it was important for them to consult God. God is the one that either give the okay or to say no. And if God say no and you go ahead, you can be assured that you're going to lose. You will be defeated. You will be slaughtered. And so they continue to do this. And they even went as far as seeking help from the Egyptian. They empty out their treasures. They took it by couriers to Egypt, right? They went down there. And of course, they went and the Egyptian promised to give them aid. But they never gave them the aid. And so they were massacred. They were destroyed. So they add sin to sin, right? So what was the evil of this sin? They were professing to be the people of God. But what? They were not acting like the people of God. It was only in profession only, only in saying that they were. But they did not actually trust in God. They weren't trusting in God. And so they add sin to sin. It was sin that brought them into the distress in the first place so that's the first thing what when it says that they had sin to sin because of sin they find themselves in the situation that they are in and instead of consulting god to get them out of the situation or to repent rather so god can take them out of the situation they add another sin to that sin by consulting other nations around them by looking hid from other nations around them by seeking their own counsel and their own advice and that end up turning out worse for them. Now, how can we relate to this? Because it is important for us to make the connection. A lot of times, we do the same thing that the children of Israel did. How many times we do something wrong, whether it is that we commit a sin or we break some rule or whatever it is that we have done. And instead of repenting of that sin, instead of going to God and confessing that sin, we try to find a way to cover up the sin. Or we add to that sin by doing something even worse. So I give you a perfect example. You stole something from somebody. The Bible said you should not steal. And then when you are asked if you stole the thing, what is your response? No, you did not steal it. So you add sin to sin. First you commit the sin of stealing and then you had the sin of a lie to the sin of stealing. So you see what I'm saying? So this was the attitude of Israel over and over and that is why they constantly find themselves in the situations that they normally find themselves because they keep going against the will of God. They keep going after their own foolish desires. And so it put them in a position that they themselves is not able to bear. And so this morning, the message is to us that we must learn to humble ourselves before God. We must learn to surrender to God. The Bible says that there is a way that seemeth right unto a man. But the end thereof is what? Pain and suffering. That is what you're going to experience if you continue to follow your own course of action. And so we have to learn from the examples and the experience of Israel so that we don't find ourselves constantly in the same thing over and over so that we don't keep experiencing the same discomfort all because we remain disobedient. Their mistakes, we are to learn from them. We must learn from them. And so friends, this morning, this reading this morning is to remind us that without God, you and I cannot survive. You and I cannot live. You and I will 
perish in our sins. Because the sad thing about it too is it seems to me that they had more confidence in their own decision making and in their own counsel and in the nations and the kings around them than they had in God. And we today are guilty of the same thing. The choices that we made, we, we make them because we don't believe God can fulfill his promises to us. We don't have any confidence in God's ability to help us. We don't trust it. So we, we are only saying that we believe, but in our hearts and in our action, we testify that we trust God not one bit. And I know it might sound harsh, but it's the reality. It is the truth. We do not trust God. And we make God a liar to the world because of that. We want to do things our way or we see fit because what we think that the power is in our hands to do it. And then when we find ourselves in trouble, even then, it's like we find it so hard to repent and to run to God. We keep sinking ourselves deeper and deeper and deeper in sin. We have no hounds of humility. We don't know when to stop. And sometimes unless God stop us, we just keep going and going and going and going. But I tell you this morning and I encourage you this morning, include myself, that we have to learn to humble ourselves. Humility and obedience is key if we are to live better lives, if we are to walk according to his righteousness because of our righteousness they are filthy and we can't save ourselves so may god continue to help you and me may he continue to guide us and as he guide us i pray that we will listen and that we will follow the leading of the holy spirit and walk not in our own counsel but rather in the counsel of god god bless you and have a wonderful rest of the day Amen.